how do we change? In other words, how do we go about ridding ourselves of something that we've been doing for a long time that has been hurting us? I think many times the way that we go about trying to change is insufficient because it's only focusing on half the problem. I think our answer to how we change in a sufficient way is found in Ephesians 4. So I'm going to read verses 22 through 28, and I want, to, I want you to notice if you hear a pattern that has to do with the way we change. So Ephesians 4, 22 through 28. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Now, did you notice a pattern there? Right? It has to do with putting off and putting on. Now, Paul uses this term in verses 22 and 24, but he goes on to give very practical examples in the verses that follow. So, for instance, in verse 25, he says, put off lying and then put on speaking truthfully to your neighbor, for we are members of one body. In verse 26, he says, put off anger, put on communication before the sun goes down. In verse 28, put off stealing, put on the habit of working hard and giving to those in need. In verse 29, put off letting foul talk come out of your mouth and instead put on speaking those things which build one another up. So Paul isn't merely telling us to stop lying, stop stealing, stop being angry. He is also telling us to replace those destructive habits with the opposite biblical habits. I think too often when we look uh, to change, we're looking at it through a narrow lens. Right? How can I white knuckle this habit away so I just stop doing something? Right? Instead, Paul knows our hearts, and he knows that unless our hearts discover something that they find more beautiful than our sin, we are either going to go right back to our sin, or we're just going to find another idol to put on the throne of our hearts. What Paul is advocating for isn't merely a method of change where we stop something, but a method of change which fans our heart's affections for something that we start doing in its place. Now, we are very feeling-oriented, feeling-driven people who want to feel a certain way in order to act. But the biblical model for change encourages us to put on certain biblical habits into practice before we may feel something. And then quite often the feelings follow. Right? Jesus said that it's what, come out, what comes out of a person that defiles them because it's an indicator of their heart. What Paul has laid out for us is so much more powerful than just trying to change our behavior. Right? This is nothing less than training our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit to love and desire the right things through replacing old habits with biblical habits. So let me leave you with this question. Which harmful habit can you replace with an opposite biblical habit?